What's up guys, Garden Drama Gnome here. <laughs> People, welcome back to the Hermit Chunk Challenge today. And as you know, in the last episode, we had our double... Got to be careful here, we had a few bit of drama, death drama in the last episode. We won't be repeating that. Um, we've got our double mini iron farm and it, it has been working an absolute treat. In fact, I'm going to take you down here because with iron we've been able to do a lot of things uh, we weren't able to up until now. Like these sort of things in my hand. Iron tools, iron things. So if we come down here, I'll show you what's happening. Some people have asked how much iron does this make? Uh, it makes between 60 and 80 ingots an hour. So I've been doing a fair bit of AFK. I've already been t pulling out iron out of this thing um, because as I said I've been making lots of things and I'll show you hoppers in there somewhere that you can see. See the bottom of them? If I go up, learn how to minecraft, there you go. There's four hoppers in there in a 2x2 two two feeding that chest, another hopper feeding that chest and uh, all the things are coming in. It's wonderful. I'm so happy about it. That means we've been able to automate even more farms. So if I come over to the dead end here where... Uh, oh my god, I'm getting lost in my own mind here. So the other thing we, we've been able to do is if I come down here, this is the back of the slime farm. There you can see the slimes. Look at that. Nuts. Crazy. Slime for days. Basically infinite slime. Don't need any more. How do I get out of here? It's becoming a bit of a rat's maze, this thing. I'm going to have to tidy it up. There's our slime farm. Hoppers are just down there, you can see. Now, I haven't got the whole area covered. I think I've got, what is it, looks like one... I can't see very well. One, two, three, four, maybe five hoppers. So if they die over in this corner, it's not, you know, we're going to miss out on the slime balls, but really, I don't think it matters. So... We've got our slime coming in, and we've got little slimes getting through the system here. We'll just pick up your balls. There we go. Uh, and over here, we've got the big cluster of uh, hoppers, and it's underneath the mob farm. And what I've done is I had a little sort of temporary platform there where the mobs would be injured but not killed, so I could hit them and get XP and whatever things that you get from when you actually kill them rather than allow them to just uh, die by themselves. And I've removed pretty much all of that overhang here. So they can just fall straight down. They're not going to hit anything on the way down. And a nice big array of hoppers here. We've, uh, you know, been growing a fair few trees, getting the wood. Got plenty of iron to do this. And wrong chest. Here it is. This is once again a double chest. It's feeding into a double, then that hopper's feeding into this. So I've got a two chest system. And this is probably a couple of hours or something. I emptied this just before. And I'm almost throwing away some of this stuff. It's just coming in. I'd like some more glowstone dust, but we can get that out of the nether now by smashing glowstones. Um, ender eyes, that's... Uh, sorry, ender pearls, that's something we're going to be doing. We're going to be reconverting this farm into basically a much more efficient enderman farm. And that'll let us get all the pearls. Because we're going to need that to make our ender eyes. Now, somebody did say, oh, you can trade for ender eyes. But yeah. that means trading and then unlocking the villager. And then I've got to breed up more villagers and put them into mine carts or stalls. And I probably am going to do that. But right now, the easiest way to get the... Uh, it, it's going to be much easier to just get ender pearls falling out of the sky here. Easy stuff. All right. So that's that. What else? Over at the other chunk, over there somewhere. Let's. I'm going to take you over to there, show you what I've been doing because I've been hard at work. Okay, here we are. And apart from making this less of a death trap with these um, railings on top, which are lower half slabs, so nothing's going to spawn on them. I think they are. Yes, they are. Uh, we have been over here. Now everything looks normal. Where are you animals? There they are. And everything sort of looks normal. There's our three pigs, our two cows. Everything's good. Uh, but I have been, have I got something, is there a gate on this thing anywhere? Yep, there it is. All right. So I've been hard at work in here. <laughs> so with the advent of iron-based technology, I've been able to mine this out a lot more efficiently. I wasn't even going to try it until I had iron, and it didn't really actually take that long. Well, yeah, it did a bit on and off over the weekend. Um, 
basically I just carved out the whole lot. I wanted some new building materials because we're going to build a house and stuff like that. So we've hollowed out this chunk. Uh, it's 14 by 14. I've left the edges. And of course there is a dungeon or part of a dungeon down here. And this is the end portal. There it is, people, in all its glory. And this is my sad attempt at trying to prevent those nasty little, what are they called, silverfish from spawning. And I've almost cut them down, eradicated their spawning, but not completely. They've infested every stone block around here. I'm not looking forward to it, because if I break one and then don't kill the... Uh, the silverfish in one hit it will call all its buddies but when its buddies break out it'll destroy all the stone and what I'm trying to do is, is keep this stone I might use it for some building and stuff we'll see so here here it is this is the thing that we need to complete to get to the end of course there's the silverfish spawner they, they are spawning and I've given up they've basically infested every lower block here they, they obviously can't infest the walls um, but at the moment, uh, probably I'm just going to leave this room for the time being. And yeah, I really don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, well, we're going to certainly tie. I, I'm probably, look guys, tell me in the comments, should I be keeping that spawner or not? I mean, really it's, it's one of the, I mean, you can turn it into an XP farm and that, but really there are better ways of making XP than silverfish nowadays in 2016, surely. So Get, get, comment. I might even put a poll in the in the comments there as to yes or no. Destroy the silverfish spawner, and then because this looks like a shrine, a shrine of the snow crash or something. It's a bit scary actually. Looks like we're gonna like sacrifice some. Anyway, I won't go. <laughs> won't go there. All right. Um. So this is the top of the uh, the the end portal room, and down here. You can see that I've just sort of left all this all this stone and just sort of carved it out. That's that's the same room. Um, it's created this void here in between um, the two. And if we come down to here, this is the incomplete. Um, this is sort of the incomplete dungeon. Like normally, this would continue on into the other chunks, um, but not a bad bit of cracked brick and mossy whatever it is. And that's it. So if we get below this down here, you can see that I've kept going, taken her down almost to the bottom. I couldn't get much further and it, it's just not worth it, you know, exposing all the bedrock there. Uh, there's still some smooth stone down there. Now those are the only diamonds in this chunk. I didn't find any others. So four diamonds, that's pretty weak, isn't it? And uh, there's a little bit of lapis and that and this and that. So... Uh, that's where this is at. Uh, why have I got torches in here? As we know, mobs will not spawn on bedrock, but they will spawn on these blocks here. And I just, they were spawning and, and it was annoying me. So we've lit it up a little. We're not getting any mobs in here and it's it's pretty good stuff. So there we go. We've, we've hollowed out pretty much all of the chunk and I will head back up to the top here and show you what I've got. Okay, back up the top here and... Yeah, didn't get that much out of that chunk actually. So obviously we've got a double chest of cobble, uh, more cobble. Uh, we got a bit of granite, and the thing I'm really disappointed in—that's all the diorite we got. Pretty much, I mean, uh, give or take some that was in my inventory, or might have taken back to the other the other chunk. Uh, I hoped for more diorite, to be honest, because I wanted to use this in some building, and you know, it's a fair bit, but. Still, you can burn through that diorite in no time at all. So we've got uh, some andesite, just a little bit of dirt, because as you can see, I started mining two blocks below where I am, and right there. So there is actually all this on top, but I don't think there's much in there apart from dirt and a bit of stone. So we got uh, that dirt, a little bit of lapis, a little bit of coal, and a decent amount of redstone, which I'll actually grab now because I've got a, and I'll grab the coal. We've got a bit of a project we're going to be doing, so I'll take that back. Okay, so over here there was just this little cave. I could hear the mobs in here, and it's just this little void here that looks out onto the void. Yep, okay, that makes sense. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, this cow's you want to go? Yeah, that's it. Back out there, please. Come on. That's it. Move your big butt. 
That's it. Get out of here. We'll block this off. Okay. All right. Uh, they can't get through there. That's good. Or can, can Pig get through one high gap? I don't know. If we've got a fence or something. Oh, I know what we'll do. All right. Let's get our iron axe out. Look at the speed. Dude, when you've been using uh, cobblestone crap for <laughs> as long as I have, iron is um, certainly something to be thankful for okay we've got a bit of we've got a bit i don't know how much sand is in here i'm guessing not a lot um how deep does it go oh there's a bit in there possibly yeah okay that's good because we're going to need the glass and that's not something we you just can't get glass like whatever sand we've got that's all we've got can't make it we'll have to recycle it that's another thing we're going to need our uh enchanting and our silk touch would be really really handy it means we can move around uh glass and and other like glowstone and stuff without you know having to worry about breaking it and stuff okay so uh now what's next we are going to go we've got our coal we've got a little bit of redstone i'm going to head back over to the other chunk all right guys i'm back over at the main chunk and as you can see i've unloaded my uh i've unloaded a bit of my stuff and i've started creating something that's very important and we're going to need one of these and i think some of you probably know what i'm going to be making because this is long overdue and uh it's time to ensure that we execute the orders of the court that's how you make one and we have to deal unfortunately with some justice now for rabbit and the time is now for you the bell tolls nigh for you rabbit all right well we've got our gangplank set up and we will probably i just don't want to end up with rabbit down in the void so you come out well, you just come with me, right? Don't jump over that fence. It's not time for that yet. Come down here. That's right. You know what's going to happen, Rabbit. You're going to get attached to there. And then we are going to take off that fence post, that fence post. And I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. I know you're looking at me with those little eyes. And may God have mercy on your soul. And forever and a day shall remain hanging over the void, as was decreed by the court. I will leave... No, I won't. I will... Uh, yeah, look, wood's in fairly uh, abundant supply at the moment. So we will just remove... Because nobody should be coming out here. I don't want sheep. I don't want uh, anything coming out here. Uh, this, this is now a secure area, just like a prison... We just can't have any riffraff or the general public coming over here and, you know, trying to uh, <laughs> trying to break Rabbit out of his uh, out of his uh, particular punishment. Um, all right, that should do us. They will despawn, and I've got to get out of here. Actually, we don't need Netherrack anymore, and we probably don't need this anymore. All right, that's that job done. On to the next task. All right, there we go. I'm with Lord Grand Supreme Controller Kevin here. Oh, look, Kevin looks pretty happy that uh, justice has been served. So there we go. There's Rabbit. And <laughs> I'm reckoning that I'm going to probably load into the game at some point. Chunks will reload or unload or and Rabbit's lead will break. And that'll be the last of Rabbit. We'll see. Minecraft is is very strange sometimes as to how things work. I uh, constantly seeing animals get pushed out of these pens. I don't understand why. It just shouldn't happen anymore, but they do. And uh, yeah, that's just Minecraft for you. All right. The next task for today is fairly straightforward. Not not too complicated, but involves some redstone. We are going to reconvert this into a flushing farm. So at the moment, it's just little pads of 3x3, three three, four 3x3s three on each platform, and mobs spawn on there, and as you get within 24 blocks, they start wandering around, which they should do. Yep, there they go. They start moving around, and then basically they just all, you know, fall down there, and yep, like that. 
But a, f- a flushing farm is going to be a lot, lot more efficient. It's going to allow all the spawning area, uh, the 10 by 10, allow them to spawn up, flush them out with water. We're going to get a lot more drops. But more importantly, it's going to allow us to get those endermen a lot more efficiently and get those ender pearls. So first things first, I'm going to light this up so there's no more mobs in there. I'm going to get close. I'm sort of getting closer and closer as they spawn. Eventually, they'll stop spawning. And uh, there'll only be one or two in there. I'll just kill them and get in there, light that up so they're not spawning. And then look at the redstone. I'm probably going to use a piston design. And I will link a couple of my farms in the description which, which use a similar mechanic to this. Okay, as you can see, I'm inside the mob farm. I'm actually inside the top level of it. And I'm just going to get rid of this water because down there you'll fall and you'll die. So we want to get rid of that. We've got some buckets and we're going to reuse this water in a moment is why I'm actually using buckets. And we're going to turn this into a flushing farm. Now the other thing I've done which you might be able to see is... Where is it? So... If, yep, all the water's gone. So as you can see, I've added a sort of an extra layer just around the corner there, along here and around there. Now that's just sort of a little walkway. I've done the same thing over here. And the reason why is we are going to need, actually I'm going to need eight water sources on this level. So how this works is uh, we are going to firstly put a uh, piston in here. And I did make some pistons. Where are they? There they are. So we'll do a facing up piston there. Now, what's going to happen is these two blocks here, I'm going to put a water source in. Now, if I do that right now, they're just going to flow out. And they will make a water source here just as we had. Just, just now, we had a water source here, and that flows down there. I just realized the other thing we've got to do is get rid of uh, these little spawning pads because we don't need these anymore. Uh, we will keep some torches in here just in case. We don't want any mobs spawning inside the mob trap where we're in here. And we'll get rid of these spawning pads. And then, as I said, you put a... I can probably do it. One there and one there. And then that just makes a water source here, which just operates in exactly the same way as we had it, even if we do like this. Okay, just flows around and goes to the edge there. Now I just realized that I can probably fill my bucket from this corner here. Let me try that. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, not going to need to go back down and get more water. All right, now why do we want this uh, situation here? Easy, because when we uh, make this piston go up, it's going to block that water and stop these two from flowing out and it'll turn the farm off, turn the flushing off. Okay, so if I just go outside and I show you how this piston works, you'll see that it's pretty straightforward. Uh, if I jump on the ladder here and put, because we need a solid block here next to that piston, then if I just put a top slab there and if I can get around here carefully and just put another one there, torch and a bit of redstone, there we go. All right, that piston came up and as you can see, it stopped the water. And when the piston retracts, the water flushes out again. It's that easy. It saves using dispensers, which then also require synchronization. If one dispenser gets out of sync with the other, it's a nightmare. This just works, works really well. So what I'm going to do is do the rest of this floor. I've got to put one in that corner, one in that corner, one in that corner. So I've put all those water sources in four corners on both platforms and I've put the pistons in and oh, you can see there's some carpet over there. That's super secret stuff. I can't talk about that now. Maybe in, a, in another episode the water sucked me in and no, I'm not going to fall down that hole. So uh, now I just need to show you the redstone because I've got the pistons and the water in and I'll show you that because I've been going around and uh, putting those in all the corners. I have put a little bit of redstone in. So if we start down here, my God. It's just, it makes me pucker every time I play this. It really, it's not so good. Okay, so if I hold shift <laughs> and come over here, you can see that I've built these little bridges out. So I've got a little bit of redstone in there. Basically, ev each of the f uh, four corners is the same thing. So what we've got is that there's the bottom of our piston down the bottom here. We're going to put a block in directly under that. Then what we're going to do is let go of shift carefully, grab our torches, and we're going to put a torch on the side there. Now you do need a upper half slab here, and that's holding in 
that's the bottom of the water source there next to the piston. So you do need a, don't put a full block above this uh, torch or you're going to have problems. So I've just put a little bit of dust in there and there. Then what we're going to do is put a torch on there. Now that turns off because the signal's going into this block. This block's on and the torch does the opposite. And we're just going to build up a little torch tower. Now this is, uh, as you can see, this is uh, two out from the farm like that. One here and one there. So if we come up, we can put a block on there, then a torch, come up a bit more, another block, and how I'm going to get up there. This is just so much fun, guys. Compared <laughs> now I'm into the farm. It's so much fun compared to creative mode when I'd normally do my tutorials. Uh, a torch on there and a block on there. Now you are going to need a a full block next to this piston. There's the piston there. If I come up a bit you can see it there's the top of the piston and then we just need our torch and that's the job done now if I climb up here because I just noticed the tops off and the bottoms not so this is wrong that is right okay now we're good now we've got water on both sides so how this works is if I come around here and look I'll just artificially activate this by putting a, a redstone torch there now our water was on and now we should find that both pistons are up. That one's up. And oh, we could just look by the particles coming through the floor. But we'll have a look. And that piston's up there. Okay? So there's no water. So that's the basic idea that down here, what I'm going to do is put a hopper timer thing to flush this out. Which I'm going to do right now. All right, guys, under the mob farm here, as you can see by all the dropping water coming through, and it's time to make our hopper clock, which I had to go and sort of just have a quick look at. I had a rough idea, but I want to get it right. So what it's going to be is four hoppers in a circular configuration. So each pointing into each other in a clockwise fashion. So you have to kick it off with one uh, temporary block there, point that hopper into there like that, being careful not to fall off the edge. Another hopper into that one, another hopper into that one get your pick out get rid of that block and the last hopper so they're all going around like that now on each side of the hoppers you're going to have to put a block there and a block there and just do the same thing all the way around and this is going to start to get really tight in here uh, that one and that one okay so once you've done that, then you're going to need to put in your comparators, which I've got here. Now, I probably should have placed them before I put the blocks down, so they have to be facing out like that. And... One there. Come around here. Another one facing... No, see, this is the problem. I'm going to have to remove that block, this one facing that direction, this one facing like that. All right, so once you've got your four comparators in, there's one over here. Then we're just going to put a spot of dust in there, a spot of uh, dust in there. Put that block back there, come around here, another spot of dust. Oh, this is all getting very technical today, isn't it? One there, no, that's wrong one there and a block there okay all done now essentially what this is going to do is if i put an item in here it should just go round and round and it'd be good if i could get above it but that's not going to happen all right so it does look like it's going round and round so basically each of these comparators is now lighting up so the more items you put in here, the slower the clock's going to go. Now if I can grab, yeah, I grab that out. So if I stick in, say, 13 ladders, you'll see that it goes a lot slower. We'll just wait for that to come around here. And there we go. And it stays on and then it goes off like that. Like this. Like, come on, go off. Go off. <laughs> What it's essentially doing is filling one hopper, then filling the next, then filling the next, then filling the next, and going around like that. There it goes. All right. Okay, so now we've got our hopper timer going round and round, and each side lights up for a, a fairly short duration, and then turns off depending on how many items, and then turns off. So it's sort of 
25% of the time it's on and then 75% of the time it's off. Now obviously we have water on the platforms here, we don't want that, we'll invert the signal and I'll show you how to do that. For the moment what we need is to get this signal out each side from maybe this side is going to be the most convenient, so one over to there, one over to here. To do that we just need to put a block here so that redstone dust stays a blob of redstone dust and we'll put a repeater on there and then we'll put a block on there and a redstone torch like this. Now that has turned off the water from this side completely until this is lit up and then it'll flush. So basically we need to do the same thing on the other side. So I need a repeater, a block, another block, uh, we'll put a torch there and a bit of dust and dust there. So now the farm is off and essentially it's going to be off for 70, so it's going to be dry for 75% of the time and then it's going to be wet for 25% of the time. So if we stick in six carpet, you'll see here, if we, yeah, I can hear it, it's flushing now and then it'll stop flushing. So we'll go up and have a look at that. There it goes. And flushing and then stop flushing. Yep, that's it. Now obviously this is way too fast. That's not enough time to build up the mobs, but it just gives you an idea. Now you just pull the pull the carpet out like that. Looks like there's no more carpet going through. It's all good. Perfect. This is working just perfect. And over there I don't know if I'm going to get sick of this guy bouncing up and down. Why do they do that? Can someone tell me, like, why do they bounce up and down? Is it because he's jump trying to jump? or? But it seems quite random. I don't know. Anyway, the bouncing rabbit. Okay, so we've got this working now. So this is it. What I'm going to do is close up the farm. Uh, there's no more torches in here because the water would have flushed them all out. Going to close up the farm and just looking that one that should close that end off and here there we go okay that should be completely dark in there i know it looks a bit like an optical illusion so now we've got to put the items in here now uh, for those that want the maths uh, the hoppers move two and a half items per second so half a stack would give us i don't know about 13 seconds flushing with about 40 seconds uh, dry. So that sort of sounds about right. I'd probably go for a tiny bit more. So what I'm going to do is maybe make this about 45 items, stick them in here, and this farm is now going. And we should see a huge, uh, actually we'll go all the way down the bottom, we should see a huge difference in the number of mobs coming out of this thing. And if I get close enough to the slime farm, the slimes will stop spawning. Remember, mobs will not spawn within 24 blocks of you. And I can hear them slapping around down there. It's probably just a couple. Now, this thing, uh, we're not going to be able to tell whether it's on or off at the moment. I should go, I should make a redstone lamp so that we can see if it's flushing. But in a moment, we should see the mobs just pouring out of this thing. I think we've got the right sort of timing. It seems to be sort of correct. It's building up about 30 odd mobs every cycle. So look, it's just something to play with. It's a bit of experimentation and, you know, you, you'll get it right. So this is sort of cycling every, you know, 15 seconds or so. Down they all come and this will, <laughs> look at them pouring out of the sky. This will make this farm a lot, lot more efficient. And that'll just keep going. It, it's not really that heavy on servers and things like that with those hopper timers. And it's going to very quickly increase the number of items in this chest, that's for sure. Okay, I've just come back up to the top of the farm and already you can see there's two endermen here now. Why are there endermen? Because they were in here and what has happened is they've teleported out. And that's exactly what we're going to be fixing in the future. We're going to be making sure that this farm stops the endermen from getting outside of here. We're going to make sure that they're caged in and uh, then we're going to get plenty of pearls. Okay guys, so why am I jumping around on my farmland? <laughs> because, <laughs> because I got... I don't know how else to do this. Like even if I turn... Oh, if I get rid of the water maybe. 
I did think it was pretty stupid that I'm going around jumping on all my farmland to turn it back into dirt, but I've got a feeling that if I get rid of the uh, the water, it will dehydrate and then end up, I think it ends up back at dirt. Yes, yeah, so basically I got comments in the last episode that said this farmland that was here was also attracting them, not just the crops, but we're not using that farm at the moment, so it's not really relevant. But yeah, I will, uh, I will put these back to... Uh, back to dirt and then the villagers in there won't be trying to plant on top of this cultivated soil okay guys the last thing on oh, now we've got a spinning pig <laughs> um hello belinda how are you going enjoying kevin's company oh it's spreading it's mad cow disease or something it's contagious spinning sheep uh, actually, what we're going to do is uh, you're potentially going to escape there. We can't have that. In you go. All right. The last exciting thing we're going to do today is get on top of the nether. That's right. We're going to get way up on top of the nether because we need to start thinking about preparing at least for a gold farm. And I've got some ideas for that. And more importantly, what I'm going to show you now is I've got all the things. I've got a card and some rails and I've got a piston and I don't have any way of activating the piston. I just spotted that. So uh, as you... Whoa, a bit of Enderman action there. Hot Enderman action. And uh, we do have some... Tor I did have torches. What am I talking about? Actually, we will take some of those. We don't... Just in case we die, we've got to be a little bit cautious of that. I don't have my diamond pick with me. But uh, I'm going to show you a way of getting on top of the nether that you can do in both 1.8 and 1.9. In 1.8, you are able to actually smash through the bedrock. That That is a thing you can do. Okay, so as I was sort of saying, uh, you in 1.8, you can actually break the bedrock. And in 1.9, it has become a lot more difficult. And for most people, it's going to be nigh impossible. So I'm going to show you a way to get up to the top of the nether and down again in 1.8 and 1.9. That's fairly easy and doesn't, you know, risk death by, you know, too much suffocation and things like that. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a staircase up because I don't have enough ladders. We're at 43. I've got to get up to about 125, which is a long way. I'm just going to make a staircase up as high as I can go, then get ladders and back in a moment. All right, guys, I'm way up the top here. Um, I think I'm basically above the portal that's way down there at 43. We are up here at 122, and I've been poking around looking for the right place because you need the right place to do this. And the right place is a couple of things. Firstly, you need to get up to the point where there's only one bedrock block between you and the roof. So one thick layer. Now, how do I know I'm there? Because if I go up, check my Y there, you can see it's 125. Uh, that means my feet are at 125. This is 126 and this block's 127 and that is the last block. Then what we need is a configuration like this, and I've found it where I'm able to uh, basically have a little hole. So there's the roof of the nether, and I've got a little sort of hole. If I come up here, you can see I've got a hole down there. Now what that means is I'm able to put a piston in there and another block here, and I can do some sort of special stuff. So I'll show you what that's about. So what you're gonna do is come over to this little hole and on the second block there, I want you to put a piston facing up. Then what I'm going to do is put a half slab on top of that piston, a lower half slab. See that? Now the next bit is easy. Just put a rail on here and then put your cart on it. We're going to push the cart into the hole like that. Take the, pick the rail up and you're just about done. We're gonna put a half slab here and that'll stop the cart spurting back out into this hole. So guys, I know you've probably seen this with the rail carts and getting above the nether, but they are prone to suffocating you. And there's one thing you don't want. No, you don't wanna die in the chunk challenge, do you? No. Certainly not by suffocation. Wow, that's way too close. All right. Um, so you, what, you don't want to die. So this system, you, you can still die, but it's a lot easier to control. There's no panic or anything like that. So the idea is we're going to remove this block 
like that and uh, essentially just power the piston and it's going to push the half slab up into the cart there okay so this is pretty much the permanent arrangement this is how it'll stay right now one other thing you're going to need is a uh, boat with you you could use a rail and a cart uh, when we get above but at the moment we're going to need a boat i always like to carry a boat and a hoe with me um, just you never know when you might need it so what we're going to do is uh, basically click so we're going to enter the cart and then we're just going to hit shift to get out of the cart that's it that's all you're going to need to do there's no rush or panic or anything like that so you're just going to get in the cart hit shift get out of the cart and I'll show you we'll do it right now all right there we go so yes we did take a little bit of suffocation um, just for that moment between the time I clicked into the cart and the time I press shift but as you can see we are above the nether people we are above the nether and you're probably wondering what's going on well I'm, I'm standing on that half slab and in fact that cart is trying to move around underneath me but we're not suffocating so it's just it's quick it's instant and it's drama free but we can't jump out so what we're going to need to do is well just put a boat down which i can't do why can't i put it ah there we go okay uh, it does take a f few clicks for some reason and um, once you've got your boat down you can just click on the boat exit the boat and you're out I can't remember I think it was this block here anyway it doesn't really matter where we came out the other thing if you didn't take any obsidian with you you're screwed okay so you need a way of making a portal up here uh, otherwise you can't get back down you'll just have to die uh, this boat you know it, it, it'll it'll occasionally like move around and stuff but generally speaking it'll it'll stay put um, if you really wanted to you could put blocks around it or something like that I'm not going to if you get in there and you don't have a boat and you break this you are pretty much I don't know what you're gonna do I don't know I don't think you can get out you may be able to place a block below you I don't know anyway let's not worry about those contingency plans the important thing is people we are on top of the nether look at it in all its glories expanding out 30 million kilometers billion kilometers in every direction um, but the important thing is nothing can spawn on top of here nothing can spawn on top of bedrock there are mobs spawning below us in the nether um, but this is Y128 and there's another 128 blocks up there that we can build and we will be building a gold farm XP and gold farm up there mainly for what reason I don't know I want to show you a couple of new little tricks with the gold farm um, so this is awesome and guys are just looking at the time seriously uh, we have run out of time this is a long long episode so for all those people that want quick 20 minute episodes I'm sorry about that and uh, for those people who uh, you know do enjoy a little bit extra you know a few extra minutes on the episode then uh, hit the thumbs up button all that sort of stuff um, I was in two minds about showing you guys the flushing farm like the redstone for it and I uh, just because I thought some people might consider it a bit boring or stuff like that but then I would have gotten like seriously hundreds of comments uh, tell us how to do the redstone on the farm so it's, it's kind of a mixed bag today sometimes you're gonna get episodes that have got the technical things and you know all, you know all that sort of stuff and and a lot of talking and sometimes you're gonna get the action-packed ones like the last episode we got it's just got to be a little bit of a mix I'm trying to cover everything and I do need to show stuff I need to show stuff happening and uh, so some of you guys can play along with me but anyway that's it for the hermit chunk challenge today so if you're enjoying the series subscribe if you haven't already you know blah blah hit the thumbs smash 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 like that uh, whatever you want to do you do it uh this has been snow crash until next time i'll catch you later cheers guys yeah.